Do you know that proxy chain is an incredibly useful tool that is incredibly poorly documented? But don't worry, in this video, I'll show you how to use proxy chains in order to be anonymous when you are doing funky stuff on the internet. Hi, and welcome to another ethical hacking video. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to configure proxy chains in Kali Linux, and the same goes for Parrot OS 2. So let's first understand what is proxy chains. Proxy chain is one of the most commonly used methodology to stay anonymous while pen testing or testing a network for a company. Okay, so for proxy chains, we do need a proxy server. Now let's understand what basically a proxy server is. Well, a proxy server is a server that acts as a middleman between you and the end server you are requesting the services from. Let me explain this thing in, in a little bit more detail. In a normal HTTP connection, your IP address is necessarily transmitted as a source IP in order to get information from destination server. The destination network or the server can gather your personal information through your unique IP given to you by your service provider or RSP. By the information, they can monitor your interest upon requesting the servers and also spy upon you and log your request for further analysis. But indeed, when you are using a proxy or a proxy server, it hides your actual unique IP instead of directly forwarding your request to, this, to the end server, your browser contacts proxy server and the proxy server forwards your request to the actual server. In the similar fashion, the end server also responses back to the proxy server and the proxy server then sends a reply to your browser. This prevents direct communication between the client and destination server, so you can be traced. If anyone wants to trace you with the end server logs, they can only trace the logs of the proxy server. If it stores, otherwise it won't. So, anonymous proxy server can protect your identity. Now that we know a little bit about proxy and proxy servers, let's look at what's the difference between proxy server and the proxy chains. Well, proxy servers is actually an HTTP proxy which will basically anonymize HTTP connections or web connections or the things that we do on the internet or we do in our browser. Whereas proxy chain or SOX proxy anonymize socket connections operating at an application level. That means proxy chains anonymize all the things that you are doing now. Let's see how to configure proxy chains in Kali Linux. In order to configure proxy chains in Kali Linux, I'll come over to my Kali machine and open up the terminal. Once the terminal gets open, I'll write in nano slash etc slash proxy chains dot c o n f and once i write that it will open up the proxy chains configuration files so here in the file we can the first thing we can see is this hash so if we are willing to comment down a line in shell script we write a hash in front of that so this will basically this hash will basically tell the compiler to ignore this line uh, or not to execute this line because this is not an actual command or if you are willing to comment down certain commands in our code we just write a hash in front of that so if you look at this dynamic chain this is basically an original command but it's commented down so the compiler can ignore this command so the first line we can see in the proxy chains configuration file is showing us the version that the version of the proxy chains that we are using. The next line shows us that we can either use the HTTP, which is basically used for proxies in the browser. We can also use the SOX4, but for this course we will not be using the SOX4 because a newer version of the SOX4, which is SOX5, has came. And in this course, we will be using the SOX5. The SOX4 was very famous, but on the, upon the release of SOX5, nobody really used the SOX4s anymore. 
Coming a little bit more down towards the dynamic chains, there are three different types of proxy chains that we can use. The first one is the dynamic chain, the second one is the strict proxy, and the third one is the random chain. Right now on my machine, the strict proxy chain is activated but I can also use the random chain and the dynamic chain as well. So let's understand what's the difference between dynamic chain, strict chain and random chain. The first thing you need to know is that these are all three types of proxy chains that can be used in Kali Linux or, or in, in pattern testing in general. Uh, well the dynamic chain means that it is a dynamic chain in which it doesn't really matter that if a proxy in the chain is up or down as long as at least one proxy is up it will work so that's why it's called the dynamic chain because it is dynamic it can switch from one proxy to another and as long as at least one proxy is active it will work in the strict chain the story is different in the strict chain all of the proxies must be active then the connection will work so in the dynamic chain there is very much less chance of disconnecting the connection while in the strict chain at least one proxy is uh, if at least one proxy is down the whole connection would be down so in order for the strict chain to work in a proxy all of the proxies must be up so this is a big difference between dynamic and strict chain the third one is the random this is the worst proxy chain nobody really should use this because uh, this basically use your uh, your system IP or your system IP address which can be traced so leave the uh, random chain right now because it's useless uh, we will talk about this dynamic and strict chain in very great details in the next video in the next video, I'll explain with a practical example how you can use dynamic chain, strict chain, and random chain. And we will also talk about this proxy DNS, which is used, uh, which would prevent DNS leaking. Basically, if you go to a domain, uh, w specifically, if you visit YouTube and this proxy DNS is not active, uh, although you have activated the proxy chains, but still the website would know that where you are and you are using proxy chains uh, for manipulating the IP addresses. So they will know. That's why we need to activate this proxy chain, this proxy DNS as well. So in the next video, we'll talk about a practical example of how to use these proxy chains. I will literally go and dig into this code in the next video. But for this video, I wanted just to I, I just wanted to explain uh, the theoretical part of the proxy chains, which we I hope which we do understand by now that random proxy chain uses our own IP and it's useless. We don't have to use that. Strict proxy chain is the proxy chain in which all of the proxies must be active at a time. Then the connection would work and the connection disconnectivity chance is very much high in the strict chain in the dynamic chain the story is completely different if at least one proxy chain is active the connection would still work so that's it for this video until next time enjoy hacking peace